Continuing on with my look at some classic Spongebob sets, this is Glove World which released in 2011 and was in my experience the last easily available set for the line. I recall this costing $60 at the time which I can assure you it definitely is not worth. That price is also how much this set apparently goes for second hand funnily enough. It sucks that these already pricey $50 sets did end up becoming $60 as the default price in 2023, Ugh, but regardless, as far as I'm aware, this set isn't based on any specific episode actually. Glove World has appeared in quite a few episodes and a few episodes after the set release, but the specific sequence itself doesn't appear in the show. It actually feels like it takes a little bit of inspiration from that Valentine's Day episode. I only attribute that episode as inspiration because it happens to be at a theme park, chocolate is involved, Sandy's there too. The overview for this set is that you get an ice cream stand which also acts as a ticket stand for the park and a ferris wheel ride as well. The figures included are Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy and an ice cream fish. The ice cream stand slash ticket stand is a very simple build but it's pretty neat. The first thing that you'll immediately notice are those colours which the set carries through on both builds. The set design and colour scheme really reminds me of a 50s boardwalk and period piece sets are my favourite sub theme of Lego. There's some nice stickers here for an ice cream menu, a glove rolled sign and an image of the glove logo on a flag. The ticket stand is nothing more than a turnstile actually, and so I guess the fish here is supposed to be also manning the ticket stand. There are no printed tickets given in the set though, only worth mentioning because the Bikini Bottom bus did include tickets for the ticket stand, not sure what's going on there. The ice cream stand is basically nothing, there's a little bit of standing room for the vendor and there are supposed to be two ice creams available, a cup with a brown stud, but also this one that uses that really great ice cream piece. The ferris wheel is its own design, the official glove wheel ferris wheel design has a massive glove on it which would have been a really cool build, but it's like that that design appeared in an episode after the set's release. To me, I think that the build does resemble the wheel from the Valentine's Day episode, but it's not an exact translation. I don't think I own many LEGO Ferris wheels, but as simple as the set is, it works really well. It can fit up to three minifigures on their own little carts, and it has a brick on the back which you can hold onto as the handle to rotate the wheel. The seats are clipped in through the use of Technic pegs, easy enough, and this gives it a swivel so it can also rotate as the wheel moves around. I could literally feel these reddish brown pieces barely holding on for dear life as I was rebuilding this, so I'll have to be careful in the future. Some minor glove stickers at the fronts of the carts and some headlights maybe? I got a little too carried away here at the end, I trusted in Spongebob to remain seated fully, but I was way too cocky. After fishing him out from behind the working area, here is Spongebob. Of the three sets that I've covered on this channel, each set did give us a brand new Spongebob figure. They're not all unique to their sets, but a good amount of them are at the very least. Spongebob uses a sandwich board design to get his squid shape, which fits over a regular minifigure body with little legs. This is the fish vendor who is one of three miscellaneous characters released in the Lego line. All three are civilian fish that use the same headpiece as one another. He has a great big smile and I love his 50s ice cream store uniform. I don't think he's a better figure than the doctor fish, but I do think he's a better figure than the bus driver. Finally, an exclusive Patrick figure. Patrick definitely received the most amount of re-releases of the same figure in the line. His default appearance was included in five sets in total, but he did end up having a good few variants towards the end, including this one. I'm critical on the colors for all of the Patrick figures. I think that he should have just been a lot more pinker and not the flesh color that Lego did end up using, but I love the chocolate details here. He's got chocolate smeared on his face and his chest, as well as a bib. Now I bought the set back in the day for Sandy, who was only available in the rocket ship set and that set had been retired. This dome piece around her head is quite sturdy and staying connected which is really great. I learned while filming this that Sandy is actually exclusive here in the set, but in the worst way possible. Her plain printed legs are a different colour to the previously released plain printed legs, but at least I have a Sandy figure, no complaints. She's one of my favourite characters from the show right up there with Squidward, so I'm really happy to have her in Lego. The dome splits apart to reveal her special moulded head, which reminds me of Aardman Animation and their designs, further proving to me that they do translate well into Lego, and we should have all of their movies as a licensed series of sets by now. The instructions are kind of themed, they're really old and I might be crazy, but it does look like that there's printing at the top of the page. At the very back there is an ad for the Krusty Krab Remake set, which I think is a really bad set, sorry, and there's an ad for the Underwater Heroes set, which I think is a really good one. Glove World is a fun small little build with four exclusive figures, believe it or not, but its price is ridiculous even by today's standards. Glad that I have it for Sandy and the others, but it's not LEGO strongest outings with this theme. If you enjoyed this look at an old LEGO Spongebob set, consider subscribing and liking the video because that helps to support our channel. Take care.